Oh, that's better. So, what's in the box today? Hmm, I wonder. Oh, hang on. I wonder. Let's find out. Here we go, here we go, here we go. What's it going to be today? Oh, good creak. That's what my knees feel like at the moment. Oh, what's this? Well, I never. Well, I never. This has never, ever happened before. Look at this. What's inside the box? A box is inside the box. Hmm. What's inside the box? Inside the box, I wonder. Hmm. I have to do that all again. And open up. Creak, creak, creak. Can you make some creaking noises, please? And look away quickly. And oh, look at that. Sleight of hand. Another box is inside the box. I wonder what's inside the box. That's inside the box. That's inside the box. Hmm. I wonder. Creaky noises, creaky noises, look away. Oh, look at that, slide the pan. Another box is inside the box. What's inside the box? This is inside the box. This is inside the box. Another box is inside the box. This is inside the box. What's inside the box? This is inside the box. Another box. And finally, yet another box. Well, I wonder what story this is going to be. Hmm. I think I know. This can only be the king that wished to touch the moon. Do you know this one? I wonder if you do. I wonder if you don't. I'd be interested to know if you do. So, oh, I should have thought about this problem, shouldn't I? Let me just put this down here. Oh my goodness me, that is heavy. That is heavy. Oh, oh, to me, to you, to me, to you. Let's put that down there. Oh, that was a moment, wasn't it? Let's put this over here. To me, to you, to me, to you. Ah, they're all crumbly. They've gone everywhere. Oh no, bits of wood all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to start the story by asking you lot out there a question. Do you remember when you were younger? Yeah? Do you have memories of that period? You remember when you were just a little bit shorter than you are now? Yeah. And you couldn't reach things? Yeah? And you wish you were taller? Maybe you had a big brother, maybe you had a big sister that would... Uh, hide their favourite toys, well not even hide them, put them out of your reach by putting them on the top shelf and you couldn't, ah, 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 you couldn't quite reach them. Or maybe your dad or your mum made a great big fat huge chocolate cake that said eat me, eat me, eat me, eat me all over it, yeah, all written in the icing, eat me, eat me, eat me, and they put it on the top shelf so you couldn't reach it and ah, ah, I want the cake, I want the cake. And, but you weren't tall enough. Or maybe you really wanted that paint, you know, the bright orange paint that says, play with me, play with me, play with me, play with me, written all over it. And you were jumping up, trying to reach it. And if you were smart, you would make yourself a tower, wouldn't you? Yeah, a tower out of all your Lego bricks, all your bits of Tupperware in the kitchen. Yeah, cardboard boxes saucepans and you would climb up that tower and hey presto orange paint and chocolate cake all over the place before i start the story i must tell you about my dog merlin we used to have a dog called merlin lovely dog i absolutely adored merlin and he was very very super smart he always managed to steal food off the side but we couldn't work out how he managed to do this he wasn't tall enough. He wasn't a great Dane. He was a tiny little thing. Tiny little thing. Cute as well. But he couldn't quite reach up there. And we never saw him jump that high. So we always wondered, how on earth did he do it? Did he maybe, I don't know, attach springs to his little paws? Doing, 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 doing. Mm, munch, 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 munch. I don't think he did. Did he perhaps attach stilts onto his legs? Maybe he had a secret trampoline we didn't know about. Maybe he had a secret space rocket and he would fly up there. But no, we were so perplexed by this. That means confused in a grown-up sort of I wonder sort of way. We were so perplexed by this that we actually set up a secret camera. Yeah, a hidden camera. Not like that one there that's right in front of me. I can see that so clearly. A little hidden camera. And we filmed how he did it. And we watched the film and we were astounded at what we saw. Little Merlin, we left some cheese on the surface, on the, the work surface, you know, the work surface in the utility room where the dishwasher is and the washing machine, all those places, yeah. We put the cheese on a plate 
high up. And we watched. We watched him gather shoes and socks and boxes and tins of baked beans and his favourite toys and he made a mountain. And then he put on a crash helmet saying Merlin on it and he borrowed my son's utility belt from his Batman outfit and he put this on and, and he looked like a proper climber and he started staggering up this mountain of boxes and tins and bits and pieces and he reached the cheese and he ate that cheese and he spent the next half an hour tidying away so that we wouldn't know. Ah, but we did know. But he was a very, very clever boy. Not clever, though, was the king in this story. The king in this story was a little bit foolish. The king in this story, believe it or not, was called King Gimme Gimme Brat Brat. Yeah, can you believe it? King Gimme Gimme Brat Brat. What sort of a parent would call their son Gimme Gimme Brat Brat? Well, obviously, they didn't know at the time what sort of a person he was going to turn into. And if they had, they would have called him something sensible, like, um, hmm, Andy. <laughs> but no, they called him King Gimme Gimme Brat Brat. And lo and behold, he turned into his name. By the time he was seven, he was so spoiled. He would say, ah, give me that, ah, give me that, I want that, give me that, give me that, that's mine, I want that, give me, give me, give me, ah, if I don't get it, I'm going to cry, boo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yeah, he really was a brat. And unfortunately, his parents gave in to him. Tut, 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 parents never, ever give in to your children. Well, maybe, on occasions, Christmas, birthdays, maybe, Easter, who knows. And he would get his way. So he was a spoiled child. And when he grew up, he was a spoiled king. He would say, Give me your castle. Give me your lands. Give me your taxes. Give me your money. I want, I want, I want. Gimme, gimme, gimme. So this is a story about King Gimme, gimme, brat, brat. One day, King Gimme, gimme, brat, brat actually... I think we'll call him King Brat Brat for short because it gets a bit over long, doesn't it? A bit long winded. One day, King Brat Brat had, had been reading a book. It was a book all about space exploration. It was about a girl called Tabitha, the space explorer. And he thought to himself, hmm, I've got several castles. I've got hundreds of castles, in fact. I've got several palaces. I've got several hundred palaces. I've got loads of lands. I've got loads of kingdoms. But do you know what? I don't have any space. I want a little bit of space. And he looked up outside his castle, the one he was in at the time, and he saw the moon and the moon was full. That's it. That's it. I want the moon. Well, uh, said one of his advisers, well, I, um, I don't know if that's entirely uh, possible. Um, you do realise, don't you, that the, uh, the moon is very, very far away and uh, the moon is also very, very big. And, uh, and if you were to bring the moon down onto Earth, well, I'm sure it would upset the magnetic field which protects this planet. It protects it from um, radioactive uh, solar flares, don't you know? And also, I, I, I'm sure it's going to alter the gravitational equilibrium of our solar system. And besides, everyone knows that the moon is made of cheese. Surely, my lord, surely the cheese is going to go stale. I forgot to do this earlier. I do apologise. Listen, I'm not stupid, you know. I realise that the moon is far away. I don't want to bring it down. I just want to own it. All I need to do is touch the moon and then I will own it. Anything I touch, I own. Look at this. I'm going to touch this bell. Touch. Mine. I'm going to touch this box. Mine. I'm going to touch. Uh, I'm going to touch your shoes. <laughs> They're mine now. <laughs> and and your knees. <laughs> your your knees are mine now. And <laughs> I'm going to touch you. 
You're mine. All mine. All mine, I say. And they said I was mad. <laughs> well, uh, my lord. Oh, sorry. That's better. Uh, well, my lord. Um, I suppose we could always build a tower to reach the moon. A tower. A tower. A tower. What a brilliant idea, the king thought. So the king asked the royal carpenter to build a tower. Carpenter! 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 Where's my royal carpenter? The royal carpenter had built the king's uh, bed, the king's wardrobe, and also the king's rocking horse, his favourite rocking horse. I'll just do that for the king for the moment. Royal carpenter, come right away! Uh, my lord, my lord, I, 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 I'm here, um, but um, you want me to build a tower to reach the, the moon? I, I, I'm not entirely sure if that is possible. What? Not possible. Not possible? Not possible, you say? There's no such thing as not possible in my kingdom. Maybe it's not possible for you, Carpenter, to have a head on your shoulders. <laughs> and they said I was mad. Get to work right now. Well, my goodness me, the carpenter, he put on his thinking hat when he got home and he started to think and think and think and think. He thought so much, he, he thought a hole in the ground. Luckily, the carpenter had lots and lots of books on the, the bookshelves, which he had built himself. Books on uh, how to build things, books on um, how to solve problems, books on the moon. And there on his top shelf, he saw a book called Reach for the Stars. Reach for the Stars, that would be a good book, he thought. So he dragged over the big wooden chest he had in his room, because it was just out of his reach, of course, it was on the top shelf. He dragged over the big wooden chest. You know, the chest that everyone has in their house. The one that holds old dog leads, blunt scissors, a pair of slippers with a slipper missing so therefore not a pair of slippers just a single slipper and also an old broken door handle that really needs fixing or thrown away and as he was dragging this box over he had an idea of course that's it of course that's it and he went running to see the king in the morning he didn't want to disturb the king at night time king 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 i've got most important news to tell you I've come up with a plan. I think if we take all the chests and all the boxes of everyone in all your kingdom, or should I say all your kingdoms, seeing as you've, you've acquired so many of them, and we put one on top of the other, then you'll be able to reach the moon. My goodness me. My goodness me. That's a good idea. Start work right now. And the king, he put out an order, an order. For everyone in the kingdom to collect their old boxes, their wooden boxes, and their chests, and their treasure chests, and bring them to the king. He even created a police force to make sure this work was done. And I have to say, all over the kingdom, there would have been old dog leads lying about, blunt scissors lying about pairs of old slippers lying about or single slippers lying about or old door handles that really ought to be fixed or thrown in the bin all over the place because everyone had donated their boxes and their chests to the king everyone of course had taken their money out if they used it to store their money in they'd taken their money out and actually at that period of time the um the sale of uh guinea pigs guinea pigs not guinea pigs no not guinea pigs at all Money pigs, what are they called? You know, those things, piggy banks, that's the word I'm looking for. Piggy banks, the sale of piggy banks went right up because everyone put their money in them. Yeah, because everyone knows it's much safer to put your money in a glazed china pig. Anyway, not only did the king set up the, uh, the good citizen box donation police uh, force, he also created the Royal Guild of Measurers. And it was the measurer's job 
to measure all the boxes that people had donated. These measurers, they were people who absolutely loved dimensions. Yes, they all had rulers, they all had tape measures, and they would measure the boxes and they would work out the order that these boxes should be stacked. And there were so many of these boxes as well. Some were painted, some were carved, some were inlaid with mother of pearl, some were studded and some were just covered in stickers. He also created, the king this is, the king also created the Royal Guild of Stackers and Pilers and it was their job to put one box on the other. Now by the time the last box was put on top it was actually a nice polished mahogany box donated by Mrs. Marjorie Crinkle of 43 uh, Henny Penny Lane. Uh, thank you, Marjorie, for your contribution. Thank you. Um, by the time this was put on top, it was plain to see by everyone, nowhere, no way Jose was this tall enough to reach the moon. The king got very angry. We need more boxes. We need more boxes. Make more boxes, he said to the carpenter. He said that with his crown on, actually, not with his fez, but never mind. Make more chests, he said. So the carpenter got to work, started taking all the timber he had off the shelves in his workshop, started to make box after box after box, but he realised this was going to take him ages. So he put a little team together, a little team of helpers, to make more and more of these chests. And this time they didn't bother about carving them or painting them or inlaying mother of pearl or putting studs on them or covering them with stickers. They were just plain wood. Well, of course, the, uh, the Royal Guild of Measurers and the Royal Guild of uh, Stackers and Pilers, they weren't very happy about the inclusion of these new boxes because they had to reconfigure the entire tower. But finally, the tower was built. And again, even though it was very, very tall, even though it almost reached the clouds, it was obvious it wasn't tall enough to reach the moon. More boxes! We need more boxes! But we've run out of wood, said the carpenter. We need more boxes now, but it's just not possible. Not possible. Not possible. I think you keep in your head is not possible. Of course it's possible. Cut down all the trees in the kingdom for more wood. Well, the carpenter went to get people to cut down the trees and the king, he actually created another guild, the Royal K Guild of Cutters and Fellers. And they chopped down every single tree in the kingdom and they, they sliced up the tree and they had plank after plank and more and more and more boxes were made. And they, again, the royal guilds of the, the stackers and the pilers and the royal guilds of the measures, they weren't happy about this. But eventually there was a tower so tall, made of boxes and chests, that it went up through the clouds. It was higher, in fact, than a magic beanstalk. Yeah, and that is high. Up and up it went through the clouds. Now, it was incredibly wibbly and incredibly wobbly, but it didn't fall down. Hey, just an aside, do any of you people out there remember the 70s? Do you? <laughs> not the 1870s, the, no, not the 1770s either, the 1970s. Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember these things called the, the weebles? And they had a little tune that went, Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Well, it was a bit like that. This tower was like a tower of weebles, but it wouldn't fall down. Well, of course, the king was incredibly, incredibly excited. And he couldn't wait until night time. Because as everyone knows, the moon only comes out at night time. I don't actually know what it does during the day, the moon. If anyone does, they can write to me and let me know. But please send it by carrier pigeon or arrow. So, he waited for the moon to come out, and luckily, the moon was full that night. Because as everybody knows, it's easier to touch a moon that is full than touch a moon that is only a crescent shape like that. Oh, all this talk about the moon is making me feel very, very thirsty. Because when I think of the moon, I think of cheese, and when I think of cheese, it makes me thirsty. Hold on. Ah, oh, that 
that's better. So the king was very, very excited and he couldn't wait for night time. Well, when night came, there was the moon shining bright in the sky, looking absolutely radiant and absolutely beautiful. And the king started scampering up this tower faster than a monkey climbing up a banana tree. Up and up he went and he wasn't scared at all. He didn't look down at all. He was manic. He was obsessed. He was mad about the moon. He had to get there. He had to touch that moon and make it his. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. Well, when he reached the top of the tower of boxes, he reached up and he couldn't touch the moon. The moon was about that far away and oh it looked so beautiful oh it looked so bright i want it i want it i want to make it mine all mine all mine <laughs> and they said i was mad well he called down to the carpenter below him we need another chest bring up one more chest and everyone on the ground was saying what's he saying the king saying something. Oh, I can't hear what he's saying. What's the king saying? And again, the king was shouting, bring up one more chest. I'm almost there. One more chest. What's the king saying? I can't hear. Now, luckily, or depending on your viewpoint, maybe unluckily, in that kingdom, there was a lady called the listener. Yeah, the listener. And she had great big ears and she could hear pretty well anything. Great big ears flapping around like this. Ooh, wobble, wobble, oh, wobble, wobble. Listener, listener, what's the king saying? He's saying, we need one more chest. He can't reach the moon. One more chest, bring him up one more chest. But there aren't any more chests, said the carpenter. And it, the carpenter shouted up, there aren't any more chests. But the king couldn't hear what the carpenter was saying. What, what, what? There aren't any more chests. Now, luckily, or depending on your viewpoint, maybe unluckily, in that kingdom, there was also a man called the Shouter. He had a very, very big voice. And the Shouter called up to the king. There aren't any more chests. Well, the king was furious. The moon was only that far away and he wanted it. He wanted it. He wanted to make it mine, 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 all mine. And they said I was mad. <laughs> I want the moon. I want the moon right now. So the king bellowed down. <sighs> he bellowed. But no one could hear him. The listener with the big flappy ears just about made out. Take the one from the bottom of the pile and bring that one up. What? Take the one from the bottom of the pile and bring that up. Everyone was amazed. Everyone was astonished. The carpenter and all his helpers. The good citizen box donation police force were astonished. The Royal Guild of Measurers were astonished. The Royal Guild of Cutters and Fellers were astonished. The listener, the shouter, they were all astonished. Surely he's not serious. And then the king bellowed down again. Bring it up! Here, did you not hear me? And this time he shouted so loud, he bellowed so loudly, they didn't even need the listener. Well, do you know what? Everyone had had enough of the king by now. They were fed up with them. They were fed up with the king. And who were they to disobey a, an order from his majesty? So all of them, the carpenter, the helpers, the good citizen box donation police force, the Royal Guild of, of Measurers, the Royal Guild of Cutters and Fellers, the Listener and the Shouter, they all put on hard hats. And between them, they managed to take out the bottom box. Oh, dear me. You know exactly what happened, don't you? 
Crash, bang, wallop. Down came the boxes. Down came the tower. Down came the king. And that was the end of King Gimme Gimme Brat Brat. The king who wanted to touch the moon. Well, my friends, the story is now well and truly over. And I have a little challenge for those that want to take part. A little weekend challenge. Try and complete this sentence. He was so lazy that he... Okay. He was so lazy that he... I want you to think of a good example of laziness. And I can drop it into the store, one of the stories I'm going to do next week. Well, my friends, if you've enjoyed this story, visit our website. And um, there are other stories you can download. And each of those has got the marvellous music of Martin Thornton on. And they're available at £3 as a download. Uh, we can actually do um, CDs, which we can send out. And they're £5 each, by the way. Um, please get in contact. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please look after each other. TTFN.